and EMS transportation? The question was, have you taken a look at the amount of time it will take uh, EMS and fire uh, to respond uh, with the additional street energy. We will have those conversations with uh, Captain Jinkerson. He has uh, just sent over an email yesterday, so we'll take care of that with him. Hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. We're going to try. To, we're going to try to work through this, and we won't ever get through all of the questions and people if we if we have a big uprising in the middle. Um, so, um, uh, Brad, Brad the priest. We'll, we'll respond. We'll get back to yeah. Brad. Will the police also be involved with those uh, emergency vehicle conversations? Yes. Uh, Paul Jolly. Paul Jolly, come on up. And while Paul is coming up, some of the other ones that are on here is uh, Chris, what is it, Napsinger, uh, David, David Lott, and Matt Kastner. If you guys could kind of get ready, that way we can keep it moving. Right. I work across the street here at St. Wenceslaus, and uh, so I'm very close to Gravel every day. And my question is, uh, I think there's some plans in for some bike lanes. And I don't know anybody that in the right mind would ride a bike up and down gravel during the day or night. <laughs> but um, just a comment, and uh, you might want to rethink that one a little bit. Um, that's uh, crossing the street is a challenge sometimes. So uh, just a comment. Um, and. Um, I mean, I, I'm for bikes and that kind of thing, but uh, I don't know that for gravel, that makes a lot of sense to put bikes up and down both sides from Grand all the way down to the highway. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Paul Jolly? Do you want a response? Oh, do you want to respond? I mean, well, I don't want to speak for uh, Great Rivers Greenway or Trailnet. Um, but part of the gateway bike plan that exists in the city of St. Louis actually calls for bike lanes on, on uh, Gravway from Jefferson down to 55. And then talking with the alderman, we're looking at other locations around Gravway up to the county line where we can at least do share the road, if not install bike lanes where we have space. So they are mode of transportation um, that we do need to accommodate. We have several bikers in the room and bike, bikers that do use the facilities. Um, that's that's been the position of the city and of Chris. Okay. Uh, so my name is Chris Nassiger. I, I uh, live in Tower Grove East uh, on the 2900 block of Compton. I've been talking to a lot of my neighbors, and I know a lot of them are very very upset about the street closures. I think uh, I think it's safe to say that many people are very upset. I, I know I am. Um, I will get through life with those streets closed if it happens, but I know a lot of people are really concerned about the quality of life uh, on their street if it's blocked off. Um, Gravoy Avenue is Highway 30, but I'd like us to stop thinking about it as a highway and think of it more as a city street. Um, <laughs> history, uh, Gravoy was once two lanes wide for about the first 100 years of St. Louis's history. I'm not necessarily saying we should go back to being uh, 30 feet wide, but uh, I feel like Gravoy should serve the people of St. Louis first and foremost. Thank you. Thank you. David Locke. Hi, my name is David Lott. Uh, I live in Tower Grove East. Uh, 3500 block of Magnolia. So um, I experience uh, South Grand on a daily basis and really enjoy what's happened. 
uh, with the new developments on South Grand. Um, first and foremost, the, uh, the street grid is the most permanent and, uh, in my opinion, the most sacred element of our city. It's what differentiates us from the suburbs. If everyone, <laughs> if we all lived uh, on a cul-de-sac, what's the difference in living in St. Charles or someplace else? there? So um, I think this is a terrible plan. Uh, in my opinion, it seems like MoDOT has brought a saw to turn a screw. And what I mean by that is it's the wrong tool to serve or to solve the problem that we have here. Um, we have enough roads that uh, separate our neighborhoods. We need more roads that bind our neighborhoods. We have too many roads that are exclusive. We need more roads that are inclusive. Um, all the um, solutions that have been shown on the boards in the back don't really ever address crossing Gravelway, but dealing with all the narrower streets that intersect Gravelway. Um, Closing these streets will increase the traffic speeds, uh, it further intimidates pedestrians, and it hampers the real estate development. Uh, we have, if, if you notice, the least desirable lots all along Gravelway, the pie-shaped, flat iron uh, shaped lots, that's where you find all of your car lots. Um, we're gaining more of those, so good luck to MoDOT trying to sell those off, and thank you for giving us more parcels to take care of on the taxpayer's dime. Um, I, I guess that's about it. I, I just think it's terrible in general, and I, uh, I'd like to see more thought put in that is uh, more inclusive to everyone that's involved in the neighborhoods on both sides. Hello, my name is uh, Matt Kastner. I uh, live at 26, well, my office is at 2654 Gravoy, uh, and I am sometimes occupied there as a resident as well. Uh, so I'm actually right at the corner of Lynch at the intersection, which I've actually never met Gary, but we're actually like pretty much neighbors, and I never met him before. So, um, two things. Uh, first off, uh, I have a lot of opinions on a lot of the things going on, and I'm sure everybody in this room does. And it is literally impossible that everybody is going to voice their opinion today. And to me, that is the exact epitome of what is wrong with everything that's going on. Everything is happening so fast, and I feel like we're trying to defuse a bomb and trying to figure out, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And the sense of urgency to me, I don't even know what my opinion is on many of these items at this point in time. And frankly, some of my opinions have changed in the last few weeks. And maybe they'll change more. Maybe MoDOT's plan will win me over, and I'll say I'm for it. But it's all happened so fast, and I've been talking to a lot of people in the last few days, and to me, what I've been experiencing and the miscommunication that's been happening and asking people what they think, and they can't even clearly define to me what their opinion is, is again, an example of this is all happening too fast. We need to sit back, figure out, what number one, what are we gonna do with these limited resources that we have, because obviously transportation funding is hard to come by. What is the things that are most important to us as a community? What do we want Gravoy to be? These are conversations we've never had uh, in mass. I mean, there have been little things that come up, but this has just kind of come out of the blue, and it's huge impactful, and it's gonna happen really quick. Uh, the second thing, I'll, I'll be brief. Uh, I, though not, yeah, I guess anymore, I was uh, the last uh, president of the Jefferson Gravoy Business Association. Most of you probably don't know what that is because it hasn't existed since 2009, uh, and it is officially, I guess I would say, defunct. Uh, but I wanted to kind of formally put it out there that anybody here that's a business owner on Jefferson or Gravelway, this is a perfect example of why we failed ourselves in our community by not keeping active and not staying around and that we are probably the number one stakeholder of the things going on in Gravelway and we have no voice at this forum and we should be ashamed of ourselves and we really need to get organized. Anybody after the meeting, I'm, I definitely want to start a conversation about trying to restart it. Please reach out. Um, I guess, has anybody been out in rush hour? 